2020 has been a crazy year when looking at volatility in the stock market. In February and March, we saw the S&P 500 drop 34% in just over 30 days, followed by a complete recovery within the next five months before the downturn in early September. Something that I've always wondered about is the validity behind the phrase buying the dip, which is a common piece of advice suggesting that you buy into the market when it drops and you're hopeful that it will rise again in the near future. I recently came across this graph on Instagram, which shows the returns of the stock market on the days that immediately follow a large drop. What they did was they took every day since 1969 that the S&P 500 decreased by 2% or more, and then collected the returns of the following days. And from the graph that we see here, it looks like there's a higher probability of seeing a positive return on the next day compared to a negative one. There were 182 days with positive returns and 156 days with negative returns, which means that 53.8% of days following a drop of 2% or greater had a positive return. So I wanted to look deeper into the results of buying the dip, but on this much shorter daily time frame. I'm hoping to be able to replicate the data in the chart, but I also want to look deeper into some other patterns of the S&P 500 as well. To collect the data, I used Yahoo Finance and downloaded the daily opening and closing prices of the S&P 500 since 1969. To calculate the rate of return on each day, I use this formula which takes the difference between the closing and opening price and then divides by the opening price. This means that the return that I'm calculating only takes into account what happens during regular trading hours and doesn't include the movement that happens in pre-market or after hours trading. And here's what the distribution of our daily returns looks like, with a mean return of 0.03%. This chart is zoomed in to get a better view at the overall shape of the distribution, but when we zoom out, we can see that the worst day in the past 50 years was on October 19th, 1987, also known as Black Monday, where the S&P 500 dropped 20.5% in a single day. The best day over the previous five decades was on October 28th, 2008, during the global financial crisis. The S&P 500 increased by 10.8%, even though it was during one of the worst months in the history of the stock market. So now let's see if our data matches what we saw in the graph from earlier. Once again, after days with a drop greater than 2%, they found 182 positive days and 156 negative days, which turned out to be about 53.8%. The data I collected gave some slightly different results, with only 172 positive days and 144 negative days, but the percentage of positive days was actually greater at 54.4%. It'd be helpful to compare these results to the percentage of all days that have a positive return, which turns out to be about 52.6%. So now that we've found similar results, let's test out some different values other than only looking at days with drops of 2% or greater. This graph here shows the proportion of days with positive returns after a previous return that was less than X%. percent. The red line shows the baseline, which represents the 52.6% of all days that have positive returns. We can see that days following a large drop have been much more likely to have a positive return on the next day, reaching over 70% in some cases, like when the market drops over 4% on the day before. This proportion gets smaller and smaller as the drops become less extreme, and at one point they even dip below a 50% chance, meaning that a negative day is now more likely. Now, the values on the left have a much lower sample size since we're only including more and more days as we move to the right, and we can see this uncertainty when we add the 95% confidence interval bounds to the plot. I wanted to see what this pattern looked like in the opposite direction as well, where we look at the days following a large increase rather than a decrease. This graph here shows the proportion of positive days after a previous return that was greater than X percent. We can see on the far right side there seems to be an opposite effect compared to what we saw earlier, where the days after a gain larger than 4 percent only tended to be positive about 30 to 40 percent of the time. Something interesting to notice is what the graph looks like at these less extreme days, such as this region here. The proportion of positive days following a previous gain that was at least 2% turns out to be 56.3%, which is even higher than the proportion that we found after a drop of the same size. But the proportions aren't the only thing that we should look at. We should also check out the average return on these days as well. Remember that we saw that the average return of all days was about 0.03%. The average return on days following a drop of 2% or greater turned out to be 0.19% and the average return on days after a gain of 2% or higher turned out to be 0.12%. However, this doesn't mean that you should only invest on days that follow a large drop or a large gain, since the days following a return between negative 2 and positive 2% still had an average return of 0.023%. And you'd be missing out on those returns if you weren't invested on those days. Now there's one more pattern that I wanted to look into with this data. In previous videos, we've covered the topic of independence, where we saw that outcomes such as the spin of a roulette wheel have the same odds of landing on red or black no matter the results of the previous spins. But is this the same in the stock market? I wanted to know if a positive day was more likely after a streak of negative days, or if a negative day was more likely after a streak of positive days. 
I went through the data and calculated the proportion of positive returns after x negative days in a row. The red line shows the overall percentage of positive days, which we saw was 52.6%. And the error bars show the 95% confidence intervals for each of the proportions. We can see that after zero negative days in a row, it seems to be slightly more likely for a positive day to occur at 53.8%. For days following one or two losses in a row, it seems like a positive day is slightly less likely than normal, while the remaining streaks of losses all seem to contain the red line within their confidence intervals. When we look at consecutive runs of positive days, it looks like the pattern is reversed. Days after zero positive days in a row seem to be slightly less likely to be a positive day, and days after one or two positive days in a row look like they are more likely to be a positive day. Now let's take a look at the average returns on the days after these streaks. The red line now represents the average return of all days, which we saw was 0.03%. After zero losses in a row, it looks like the average return was higher than the overall average at 0.058%. The average return after one and two losses in a row actually turned out to be negative, and the average return after five losses in a row was much higher at 0.2%, but still contained the overall average in its confidence interval. When we look at the average returns after streaks of positive days, we once again see the opposite pattern appear. Days after zero positive days in a row seem to have a lower average return and days after one or two positive days in a row look like they have a higher average return. These are all of the patterns that I'll be checking out in this video, but if you have something else that you want to look at, I'll leave a link to the code and the data down below. I really enjoyed making a video about the stock market, and I hope that it's a topic that you all like as well. So let me know in the comments if this is something that you'd like to see me continue talking about. Also, it would help me out a ton if you like this video, so that YouTube will end up showing it to more people. And lastly, I've started a Discord channel for mining the data so that we can have a place to talk about gambling, investing, and statistics for anyone that's interested. I thought it'd be a cool way to share ideas and meet people with similar interests, so I'll leave a link to join in the description as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.